Alléluia. Alléluia. Mary, the kind of wife that when she comes up and you come up, you feel anointed. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Don't marry a prayer point. Marry a prayer partner. Praise God. Praise God. If you are single here, say I. Call your name. Call your name. Say I. Call your name. I am not foolish and I will not be foolish I have sense in the name of Jesus the story is written in scripture that is true just taking off from where Julius stopped four lepers were at the crux and at the door of prophecy a prophecy had been given that this time tomorrow <laughs> this famine will be gone let me say this to you one of the worst tragedies that will happen to a child of God is to be at the door of prophecy and never get in the man on whose arm the king leaned said no even if the heavens were open that's how bad his unbelief was see like I was saying um, if you come into a place like this you have come into a place of grace in essence you are at the door what you need to do is to step in you see what julia was saying some of us our mind shift that will get us into all that god requires for us to get into is happening so that man said look even if the heavens were opened this famine cannot go away like that i am not saying this to bedevil your culture everybody has a cultural problem my parents were separated. I was eight divorced. I was ten. I've had four mothers. I know how to be a stepson. I've been three times. <laughs> Hello? But destiny, destiny called me to start a new stream. Destiny called me to stop some nonsense with my time. So I don't care what's common in South Africa. You're actually not South African. South Africa just has the privilege to have you. Because the Bible says in Hebrew, we have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God. I belong to a new kingdom. I just came through Nigeria. Somebody needs to get that. So when we speak like this, when she said, come up here. Oh, it was, um, it was Papa Chris Delvan some years ago that sang, Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise, to stand upon this mountain. And to glorify his name to tell all the people in every nation that he reigns zion is calling me to a higher place of grace zion is calling you it will be tragedy for zion to call you and you are holding on to a fool of a boyfriend hello hello you know as a man of god when god asks you do you like my glory or the girls what a comparison do you want my glory or the girls hello so when she said come up here you know it's much more of blessed memory that taught a very wonderful message on the word repent when he began to explain that the word repent is to return to the penthouse because pent the penthouse is a place where you see differently every oh god you guys are not nigerian but let me take you to nigeria every nyama nyama in your life that's every rubbish in your life is because of what you see can i ask you a question if you saw your president walk into this place in rags you'll be surprised some of the things you find yourself doing you should be surprised you are doing it you should be amazed why am i doing this why am i living like this won't you be amazed if you hear i beat my wife because you don't expect it of who i am sometimes be shocked at yourself when you do certain things why am i doing this why when you come to repentance you are coming to the penthouse and how many of you know that where you stand determines what you see 
So when she's speaking like that, and what you see determines what you become. That's why when the serpent was beating them, the Bible said that God commanded that the brazen serpent be lifted up and whoever sees looks upon it that's why the songwriters say we behold we become unto we are formed that's why i say look into the perfect law of liberty that's where our life is so what we're sharing is to basically say who are you because i'm going to share a simple word today what has mastered you because the scripture said i should not be mastered by anything i should master all things has even your culture mastered you culture why does culture master us because informal education is stronger than formal education i never went to school to speak my tribe but i can speak it i didn't sit in a class to learn it some of us tonight need to come to the point where we call out the problem for what it is you know we were taking a walk yesterday there was this beautiful young girl in front of us we weren't bothered because we were focused on where we were going to but you see we saw these two other men one tapped the other and they were talking and their conversation became about the girl he left the car where he was went around the car to have a good look at He's mastered that's why a man will drive see a girl and rather than focus on his driving he'll be using the side mirror after he has driven past it has mastered him informal education is strong you just grew up in your house and you can speak your language you didn't sit in a class for it in fact informal education is stronger than formal education that is why they had to use the whip and the discipline and all for formal education to work but you just sat in a house and you can speak a language i'm going somewhere because there are weaknesses you did not bargain for there are weaknesses that fell on you by exposure so before you were 10 before you were 10 you watch men beat women before you were 15 you watch a woman have seven children for six men and guess what exposure begins to condition your permission if that person can do it if that person can do it let me look for trouble in south africa when you know the side chick of your bishop jesus becomes downgraded it looks like if somebody up there can do it who am i i'm not even yet a deacon <laughs> who am i <laughs> so what's going on exposure for some of us exposure is so powerful your father who should correct you has been married five times so automatically your correct button is broken because if you do it he does not have the moral authority to correct you so a structure that god set in place to help you is broken why the bible says, train up and the way should go when he's old he will not depart from it and the opposite of training is corruption if you don't train you corrupt are you seeing the power of exposure and that's the error of adam because the serpent came and said to eve did god really say then eve said ah the day we eat of it we die the serpent say you will not really die then they ate i'm still standing you know it's like your first fornication i'm sorry you know this, these people are righteous you don't fornicate i'm just saying those people that fornicate it's like your first fornication you know there's there's this pain there's this oh i shouldn't i shouldn't then the next fornication the pain is lower then the next the pain is lower then the next the pain is lower i didn't really die there's, there's no pain I, I, didn't, I, I didn't really die i'm okay i'm alive i'm not just alive i'm strong it's an informal conditioning but let me say this to you and i'm not prophesying in the sense that i'm commanding it to happen a pastor said when he was teaching 
you are the new stream but if you do not rise up you'll be as dirty as the former river your lineage will have no hope if you flow like the former river if everything that happened before you came happens with you you have failed god you are the new stream yes i know that everybody before me couldn't stay married i know everybody before me so so and so let's even balance it i even already have problems but guess what there was a woman that jesus met by the well i left my notes since actually i'll go back to it and close i just realized that my note is the closing point jesus met a woman by the well and jesus was thirsty in fact he was hungry that's why his disciples went to you know try to buy food then jesus said to her can you just give me some drink <laughs> and the woman said what are you going to draw this water with jesus was amused you, you see the reason why we behave like today we are believers tomorrow we are not believers is because we don't understand that the kingdom itself is a culture and i'm going to prove it for you, to you from scripture and somebody's wondering is this still relationship and marriage yes this is why my wife is happy it's not about because i can come here and tell you 17 ways to make a woman happy send her money take her on vacation come on some people do not have the capacity to do the instruction because the engine has not changed what i'm talking about is to change the engine so i don't need somebody to come and tell me to take my wife on vacation there's an engine in me that makes me do it and that engine is the holy ghost do you know how many things i bought for her at the instruction of the holy ghost do you know even parenting just before we left we sat in our family devotion i'm not saying this to be boastful i'm telling you the truth just a few days ago and i i looked at my son i said did you have a dream last night he said yes you can't but he can't remember the dream i said did you play football in the dream he said daddy how did you know there's an engine there's an engine there's an engine he looked at me i said how did you know i said i just saw it i just saw it so i'm not trying to be spooky that was not on a pulpit that was in my house there's an engine there's an engine you want to get angry the only speak go and apologize to that woman hey holy ghost hey, apologize holy ghost leave me alone see the holy ghost is not just about falling in church the holy ghost is about instruction so we're in a new culture don't tell me i'm zulu zulu man don't behave like you don't know who you are you don't know where you're from if your Zulu identity is stronger than your Zion identity, you are missing road. You need a GPS to return you where you should be. Our neighbors should look at us and wonder what kind of family is this? Do you get what I'm saying? So this is the truth of it. Because you know, that's why it, it see, when a girl understands Zion, when a man says, open your leg for what? my body is the temple of the living god my members are under control at that point she's not identity is talking identity do you know who i am do you walk to the president's daughter and say hop in the car the police will get you that day are you mad hop in which car you know because some of us don't understand who we are you know we can sing sinatra i know who i am hey, 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 hey. it's not a song it's a truth i know who i am you need to look at some boys in the eye and say what do you think you are who are you talking to did you drink something or something are you drunk that's why you are permitted to ask see my, my brother what's wrong with you are you high on something you looked at me head to toe you say come and do what Get into it that your bed that is full of bed bug. How? A boy that cannot even feed himself. <laughs> hey! Say no, boy, I know who I am. Look at your next neighbor. Say, I know who I am. He get a picture with credit to them. So Jesus looked at her. Say, go repent see differently 
You have a different view. Let's look at two scriptures, three scriptures. Then I'll give you about seven or eight points. And we jump off. Ooh. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hmm. Okay, before we do 10, let's do 1 Corinthians chapter number 8. It's chapter 6. I'll read in a couple of translations. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. And we'll do 10. I have the right to do anything you say. But not everything is beneficial. In the context of this marriage, my conduct is regulated by what is beneficial. If I speak to her this way, is it beneficial? And let me quickly say this. Sometimes I, I give this much focus to the ladies. Because ladies do not actually realize they have more power of choice than they have. And let me quickly drop this with you. The more you accommodate the wrong ones, the more you block the space for the right one. So don't let pressure make you to block the way for the right one. Because every minute lost with the right one is a delay for the right one. Any minute lost with the wrong one, sorry, is a delay for the right one. And sometimes people say, how long will I wait? How long will I wait? Do you know a lot of ladies are no longer looking for marriage for purpose or for pressure? And guess what? Every time you succumb to pressure, your ability to make mistake goes higher. That's why Philippians 4, 7 tells us. From verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing. But in all things, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And he said, the God of peace will garrison your heart. Because the first thing God releases before answer is peace. Why? You can't receive his answer without peace. Why am I saying this? Do you know God may bring a man your way that does not look like your dream? I got my first passport with our first son 13 years ago. I didn't even know how they left the country. They left to London before I ever flew a plane to go anywhere outside Nigeria. I didn't look like it. But you see, there's an eye that if you do not have, let me quickly say this, if all you know is what eyes can see, you are blind. There is a knowing. There is a discerning that a man stands in front of you, a woman stands in front of you, you know. You just know. That knowing is from within. That's the same way somebody may be in your life, everything looks good, but your spirit knows this is bad. Why am I resisting this? I don't know. Why am I refusing this? I don't know. But there's a spirit in there. I'll give you a very funny story. Real life story. The lady told me herself. This knowing we're talking about. This is why people get into trouble. Useless trouble. Why? All they know is this. They're blind. This lady was dating a guy in my, my city, Abuja. The guy was the Christian shining light of his whole family. If you wanted to say who is influencing the family for Christ, it was him. He was into, you know, on online business and all of that. Everything looked legit. Then on a certain day, she had just finished praying. And she fell into something like a trance. And she saw a woman in his life. So she came out of it and picked her phone and just called him straight. She wasn't even thinking. She just said, who is the woman in your life? The guy broke down crying on the phone and began to confess he had a rich old woman that actually funded his life. He was not doing any business. Instantly, with his heart that was not broken, his concern was, please do not tell my father. That's the guy she was to marry as a Christian. He, if he had lied, she would have still not known but you see, God showed her something and moved on him to open his mouth and say it. And somebody just wants to walk into marriage because he's tall, dark, and handsome. You know, you know a muscular man is supposed to use his muscle to defend you. But if you marry a fool, he will use his muscle to beat you. 
just the same muscle is not doing the job he's doing something else why engine engine what's the engine what's the engine we'll, we'll continue this reading but i said i was going to prove to you i remember now i lost the point that this kingdom is about culture that's why when his disciples asked him to teach them to pray in uh, matthew chapter 6 he said our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven in essence dominate the earth with a different culture in essence when people see how i love my wife they will see how christ loves the church and a man who is struggling on earth can ask me what kind of man are you because today we just take christianity as a religion forgetting that the word christian christ-like actually came from people observing if my wife does not think I am born again, I am not a man of God. If the people in your house do not believe you are a child of God, chances are that you are not. Because it's a culture. It's not a profession. It's not what you feel on the form. It's a culture. Her hope is in my salvation. Why? Any good person can change. But when Jesus, when Jesus, what gives me a good husband? Jesus. Not the Jesus I feel on forms. The Jesus that can talk to me. Why? God is jealous of his precious daughter. The only thing he can tell me is good. God is jealous of his son. The only thing he can tell her to do to me is good. So you have a lot of people who think they are in Christian marriages that are not. Because a Christian marriage is not one that was joined in a church. It's one where the spirit leads them. A lot of people, today is even Saturday in Nigeria, I would say Saturdays are for wedding. A lot of people went to church today, God cannot recognize the marriage. Because you see, recently Moses Bliss got married, we say, Kingdom marriage. So you feel a Sunday, Kingdom marriage. The definition of a kingdom marriage is not a popular celebrity getting married. Kingdom marriage is also those two guys in your church who are unknown, who honor God and got married quietly, honoring Jesus. So if the popular celebrity, after putting the pictures everywhere, does not honor Jesus in that home, it is not kingdom marriage, it's popular marriage. There's a different matter. <laughs> Mm. I'm preaching real good here. Come on. Ah, the Holy Ghost is moving. Am I not preaching real good? Thank you for not abandoning me. But the thing is flawed. Is it thy kingdom? Come. I should be the kind of husband that Jesus would have been if he chose to marry. Can you imagine Jesus that walked the earth get married to you? Who do you just finish? You just multiply it. <laughs> no more going to the market. He said, Just buy one cup of rice, my darling. Cooking, just cooking. In fact, he said, That rice cook last year, just be serving. No more cooking. <laughs> yeah. Jesus walked into Peter's house. His mother-in-law was sick. The Bible says he checked out the spirit of fever. Kingdom marriage is when the couple have authority. But there's too much evil on earth to be without authority. You see people every day. You see, you see this thing you say power couple, power couple. We, we attach it to people who are popular. That's nonsense. The original intention of God was every marriage was power couple. And I'll prove it to you. In Genesis 1, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Without the dominion mandate, there's no Christian marriage. Let them have dominion. 
and I give you a balance to read in the New Testament, that's why the Bible says, if any two of you shall agree, as touching anything, in essence, our coming together is a power force. So just in case you are married here, and you are not generating force, you are wasting a kingdom marriage. Touch and agree. And just in case you are single, you are dating somebody, say, let us pray. She said, what do you mean? Say, be going. Just be gone. Why? You are supposed to join forces with me. And I am asking you, you are now becoming the force of darkness. Be going. I am not looking for force of darkness. I am looking for force of partner. Can we pray about it? Be realistic. Let's face reality. If your reality is not prayer, be going. My reality is prayer. Do you know how many devils want to kill me? Oh, some of us don't even know that the reason we are broke is not the economy, it's demons. You have worked, worked, worked. You have labored. Labored. Nothing is moving. One small, uh, what do you call Dr. Tin again? One small Sangoma is sitting in your village. They molded your image, they just used pin. <laughs> Some people they just molded their image, put them inside a bottle. <laughs> just see the bottle. I say, let's pray. Say, let's face reality. This economy is terrible. Uh, my foster is just killing us, killing us. You think your problem is the president? You have a problem. <laughs> hey, it's a culture. It's a culture. Let's finish the Bible. Come down, come down, come down. Come down. Oh, truly come down. You have the right to do anything you say. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. But not everything is beneficial. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Baby, please come. I need to showcase you. Let me show you what's beneficial. Get on the podium. Thank you. Come here, focus on her. Jesus. Hey! I married a wife, not a knife. My God. Focus, focus. The Bible says in Ephesians that so ought men to love their wives as Christ loved the church. That's my culture. And I'm going to show you. How does Christ love the church? Come on. I'll show you. This is a big love letter by Jesus. He writes to the church. That's why when John began to get revelation in the book of Revelations, he said, unto the church in Ephesus, right. Some of us wrote love letters when we were in school. Took the woman home and our pen broke. He writes. He writes. How many of you just read the word of God and feel happy? Write to her. Leave her notes in the house. That's why there are sticker papers. I just love you. I cherish you. What's the next thing he does? He didn't just give us a Bible. He gave us his Holy Spirit. In essence, I must create an ever-abiding presence. Whether I am present or absent, I must be present. Ever-abiding. He said he will be with you always. Not, Don't you know I'm in the office? Leave me alone. She cannot leave you alone. When you were chasing her, she did not leave you alone. You were pursuing her night and day. Where are you? I am coming. Who are you with? Where would you be going to? Have you eaten? Have you drank water? Please don't choke on the water. Drink it gently. <laughs> he gave us his ever abiding spirit. He didn't stop there. Say, your young men will dream dreams and your old men will see visions. Excuse me, sir. Is the Holy Spirit not enough? Say, no, I'll give you gifts. You will see things. What am I making her see? When I speak, what can she see? A man is useless when he cannot create pictures. <laughs> Do you realize when you came into Christ, you began to see? Possibilities expanded. This woman's possibility in life should expand because I exist. And I'm not kidding. You saw my wife teach? When I married her, she wouldn't teach for two minutes. 
She wouldn't even stand in front of people. But I needed to unleash a grace that she carries. If a man cannot unleash you, he's not a man. He's a boy. He should go to school, not find a wife. Then the Bible says, in Ephesians 5, he washes her with the washing of water by the word. My speaking washes her. Oh, the one that amazes me. You're about to catwalk, right? Back and forth. I'll tell you when. Ooh, the one that amazes me. It amazes me. I'll show you scripture. Ooh, ooh, Jesus, Jesus. Make up. He said he washes her with the washing of the water by the word. Arranges her. Watch this. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, presenting a heart for himself without spot or wrinkle. Haven't spoken to you well. Haven't prayed for you. Haven't decorated you. I take my seat and say, cut work for me. <laughs> in essence, I am not asking you to perform because I have performed. But what kind of woman is this? The house is not clean. My brother, get in the kitchen and wash. Not what, what kind of woman did I marry? You cannot even cook. My brother, cook. So he sits. Say, I did your makeup. I touched up on your hair. I gave you the right dress. I spoke to you rightly. Showcase who my wife is. Let the world see. Come on, baby. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Hey! Hey! That's what he does. She cannot have low self-esteem living in my house. Self-esteem problem from where? When my mouth exists. You say I can do anything, but is it beneficial? That's the question he's asking. Because everything Jesus did was beneficial to us. The Bible says, Why were yet sinners? Even as a woman, what you are doing in your house is beneficial. When you read 1 Corinthians 7, these guys were married to unbelievers before they got saved. And they to the apostles, my spouse is an unbeliever. What do I do? Do I get out? Do I have a divorce? The apostles say, hey, 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 guys. Do you not know that the unbelieving spouse is sanctified by the believing spouse? In essence, the apostles asked, how great is your light? Why is the darkness of your partner overshadowing you? Because for some people, marriage has altered them because their light is weak. Don't tell me that. Do you know how my husband spoke to me? That does not mean you should... Let me speak bad English. That does not mean you should spoke back in the same tone. That's why, see, to tell you the power of light, that's why the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. In essence, I don't care your wrath. I have the answer to quell it. Not fire for fire. This is not even the Bible. It's Mahatma Gandhi that said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We have a blind and a toothless nation. You take mine, I take yours. How great is your light? Because what you should do in marriage is what is beneficial. That's why 1 Corinthians 7, he went as far as saying, for the sake of the children. In essence, there's a generation to redeem. There's a generation that when they look around society, they see dysfunction. But when they look at their father, they say, I have a reason to stand. You are not just for you. You are for another generation. You're supposed to picture that a generation will see and have hope. Say, I know I've met 50,000 50, broken homes. But when I look at that home, I'm the picture of hope. I'm the statue of liberty. That somebody can look at me and see what the word of God says. What's beneficial? What's beneficial? Let's begin around this up. But I need to read two, two translations. The New Living Translation says, You say I'm allowed to do anything. You're the one saying that's not the word of God. But not everything is good for you. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. I must not become a slave. I must not become a sexual addict. I must not be controlled by anything. You know, 
Especially as Christians, we have a way of classifying big sin and small sin. So we look at people. Some people are slaves to Coke, Coca-Cola. Yeah. Yeah, it's not everything that is sexual. So you need to break your Coke addiction because it's killing you. You're just pumping your body with sugar to die. Some people are addicted to yelling. Some people are addicted to anger. Some singles are addicted to relationship. Since they turned 14, they have never been single. Somebody must be in their life. Just addicted to dating. They are afraid to be alone. You, are, you broke up yesterday. You are in a relationship today. Something's wrong with you. Nothing should master me. In essence, when I show up on earth, I should show up with liberty. That's why Jesus said, the prince of this world comes. He has nothing in me. He has no button to control me. I, that's what Jesus will say. I choose when I lay down my life. I choose when I pick it by myself. Nothing has mastered me. The journey of growth as a believer is nothing should master you. And you see, for things not to master you, a lot of times you have to cut some arms away. Let me tell you the truth. Some of us seated here, you are not supposed to have data on your phone because you have not mastered what to do when you're online. So the first thing you need to master is to choose not to be online. First master it. Let me give you an example. In the days that we were tempted by masturbation, you needed to go to the internet cafe to see porn. In this day, you are behind your door in your room alone with your headphones to even make the volume loud. Virtual reality. So the first thing you need to do is to even ask yourself, am I supposed to be online? Because the reason some people have an offline relationship with God is because they are online on it. Should I even be online? Number two, now that I am online, have I mastered being online? And it's not everything that is sexual immorality. Some of us is that you have been on Facebook 20 hours out of 24 hours and you cannot see what it is producing in your life. Because the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for it determines the course of your life. That's why we have a depressed generation. Very depressed. Why are you depressed? You don't know. I know. It's your phone. Because you just saw one stupid girl claim she's celebrity, pose in front of a private jet and she's 26. You happen to be 39. You left 26 many years ago. Then you looked at her and said, I have failed. You did not even realize that the engine was covered. That means she was not flying. She just went to pose. And she said, living the life. Then you just felt, I'm not living the life. Depressed generation. Whereas the Bible says, they have become fools comparing themselves one to another. <gasps> He's got a big church. And I don't have a big church. Like the calling of God is about comparison. When that thing happened in the hotel today, I said, Lord, if this is all we came to South Africa for, we got souls. We are fulfilled. Because there was a certain day we were on a journey like this journey. And at the airport, God asked me a question, what's the value of one soul? Because sometimes as a minister, you spend a lot, especially those of us that are traveling ministers, you spend a lot and spend a lot. And I'm just wondering, why, why are you traveling? Why are you? And he just asked me straight up at the airport, what's the value of one soul? From that day, anywhere we go, whatever number we see, and by the grace of God, we have seen numbers. Whatever number we see, I preach with my life. Because what's the value of one soul? But social media will tell you differently. Don't be mastered by anything. Don't be mastered by anything. So you need to look at your life today. If there's any area something has mastered you, tell yourself no. Finally, finally, a few points I wrote down. I'll just read them out so that we can pray. Eight things you must master. Eight things you must master. Number one, your emotions. Emotions are often not true. Often not true. 
I feel like, I feel like. I. The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, not as many as are led by their emotions. Your emotions will tell you things that are not true. Number two, your eyes. <laughs> the eye is a gate. Master what you see. That's why sometimes we travel a whole week we're in a hotel room and we do not put on the TV. The news is always bad. In fact, these days, you don't even need to look for the news. The news is looking for you. Because all your friends that put you on your broadcast, their broadcast message, they have told you all about South Africa before you're on the TV. I can't watch things like... I, so, you know some people are addicted to CNN. Breaking news. I don't want that. The world is already broken. There's nothing to break. Before I was born, Israel and Gaza have problem. After I was born, Israel and Gaza have problem. Because at the point, I just put on the news. My, my daughter, our last daughter was asking us, that with the war reach Nigeria, <laughs> they fear. <laughs> she's like, she's like, how far is Nigeria from Gaza? Because when she's on a bomb, <laughs> that day I laughed. She said, how far is Nigeria from Gaza? She was in bomb, bomb. But your eyes, especially for us men. In this generation where breast is everywhere, close it, close your eyes. They have refused to wear bra. You wear the bra of the eye. The nakedness I've seen in this South Africa, I've not seen it in my life. You are just going on the road. But, 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 ah! Help me, help me, help me, brother, help me, brother. Hey, Baby, hold my hand, be guiding me. I cannot see, I can't see. You know what I'm saying this thing? Once Satan successfully desensitizes you, you are finished. Once you take normal, what's abnormal, you are finished. Learn to see, call it out, no matter how common it is. That's naked. Watch your eyes. Number three, watch your hearing. Some people listening to me right now, this number three point is why tonight, Davido, Ashake, Bona Boy, get out of your phone. And let me tell you, one of the latest exports out of Nigeria that is extremely demonic called Odumeje. You see that man? <laughs> release the power. Release the power. It, it is the... Satan uses entertainment to gain an inroad. So be careful what entertains you. You're hearing? Master it. I don't want to hear that sound. Some people did not know him as Odumeje. It's in Daboski. Hmm, is that one. Master what you hear. Put your ear under control. And you know, these are the kind of things they put on social media as slaters. Condemn. They are condemning. We live in a generation that say don't condemn. Let me tell you, adultery is still adultery. Whether you call it condemnation or not condemnation. If you touch somebody's, if you touch somebody you did not take to the altar to marry, it is still adultery. It's not we are just getting along. You are not getting along. You are doing adul adultery. It's called adulteration. The word adultery is the word adulterate. That means you are infiltrate. You are yeah. Because sometimes you are just sitting. Your life is just moving normal. Then you hear one thing. Yeah, that's it. They do me. Do me. He's doing you. Then your body starts. Yeah. 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 Why? The things you are hearing are injecting spirits. <laughs> See, we live in a generation that is not high on discernment. A generation that drinks poison and says sweet. Number four, master your excitement. <laughs> some people, once they are just excited, everything has finished. That's why some people actually drink. Because they need Dutch courage. They need to pump their excitement to do what they could have not done when they are in their senses that's why some people man of god god is involved in keeping them poor because small money and they are excited is over they can't even come to church that's why see some people need to stop going for even birthday party for now because the moment the atmosphere is just full of excitement their guards go lower they start accepting nonsense. You must master your excitement. You must learn to be excited but still righteous. 
That's why people get miracles and go to celebrate in the club. God gave the miracle. They did the thanksgiving with Satan. Excitement. Excitement. Master your excited. What do you do when you're excited? Judge what you do when you're excited. Does it give glory to God? Number five. Master your frustration. For frustration you shall have. I'm not cursing you. Why? Anybody on course in destiny, Satan will begin to set roadblocks. He's not setting roadblocks because he can stop your destiny. He's setting roadblocks so that you can be frustrated and stop the journey. Did you get the point? The roadblock cannot stop you. What will stop you is you deciding that ah, with this thing I am seeing, I will not. Master your frustration. Let me tell you why you have to master your frustration. Mark chapter 10, Jesus said something that he, today I don't understand. He said, if any of you have given up houses, cars, children, husband, wife, for my sake. He said, in this light, you will receive houses, husband, and this. He said, and persecution. Jesus, why are you rewarding me with persecution? Because you will stand in an office where one signature can make you steal the nation dry. And you will say, I'd rather be poor than to sign it. That's persecution. There's something called Christian suffering. As a man, you, you started liking a girl. Your body is telling, and the girl is even cooperating. You know, there are people that you meet, eh? it's just a matter of where you meet. Both of you know, your heart has, your heart aligns. She look you, look at me. Hey, Shanda. Christian suffering, Christian suffering. I can't enter, I can't enter. Share blanket, blanket, Christian suffering, Christian. Somebody's looking at me. It's Christian suffering. Your body is telling you fire. Because there are people you meet, man of God. You know, it's those days we used to chase girls. This generation, girls are chasing men. They have relieved men of looking for them. You just pick a man's phone, you must have me. Jesus. Yes. Oh, oh, generation that ladies are sending pastors nude. But there's something called Christian suffering. Why? Block and delete are weapons of the spirit. Because somebody you would rather enjoy the chat, you are blocking. It's Christian suffering. Hi. Because some of us, the way we enter complicated relationship is that as the chat is going on, you know that's a fool you are chatting. But you can't stop the chat. It has mastered you. You wake up in the morning. Hi, beauty. Are you awake? <laughs> you are alone in your bed. Master even your frustration. Because sometimes, let me tell you, the reason some people enter some relationship is that they are frustrated being single. Valentine is coming. Pressure, pressure. Pressure. They want flower, flower, flower. Some people have been deflowered because they were looking for flower. Master your frustration. So that you not marry a dog. And somebody say you call somebody a dog. The Bible says beware of dogs. It's inside the Bible, Galatians. Say beware of dogs. And I think I said this here last year. Let me repeat it. Hope you know Adam saw animals and rejected them. He only named them, then was able to take Eve. There are people dating what they should name. Dog, monkey, cow, elephant. You are dating what you should name. Why? In Genesis 2.21, after he named them, the Bible said none was found for him. Ah, I thought it was just a naming ceremony. It was also a search. Adam was checking. In fact, the names came out of the frustration of them not being the one. Because God had told him in verse 18 that he was bringing him a helper. Then in verse 19, he brought animals. Because somebody may live here right now and I prophesy. Oh, you are getting married gloriously. Then you just thought, I want an elephant. Come and stand. You now start dating an elephant. No. Adam said, you are not the picture that I was told. So, elephant. Ah, no help in this one. Monkey. Goat. <laughs> you, ladies, you know the goats. You know the goats that dated your friend and want to come and date you. They finish your friend, they want to come and finish you. You know the goats. But frustration may just make you. 
A uh, man of God understand with me now. Body, as they say in Nigeria, body no be firewood. Do you have firewood here? So the body is not firewood. It has to be. It has, master your body. Master your speech. How you talk. Master your speech. Sometimes, even in marriage, you go and stand in front of the mirror. You are angry with your spouse and you are rehearsing how to talk. You stand in front of the mirror. Baby, actually, I don't like. No. Actually, I, I was really hot this morning. No. I feel really sad, you know. Master your speech. Master your speech. Master your speech. Number seven. Master your organs. All your organs. You know, hand is an organ. That's why people use it to slap. <laughs> master all your organs. Not just your sexual organ. Master your organs. Master them. Mm. Master them. Master your organs. The Bible calls it your members. This organ, it calls it your members. Number eight and the last, master your relationships. I close with that one. This relationship cannot fail in my hand if I master it. In essence, I must watch this relationship from a position of what it becomes. This relationship is not going anywhere to go. It is going where I am choosing it to go. People that do music know that when you are done recording, they go for mastering. What are they doing? They are trying to make it come out the exact way it should sound. That's why when they are done with live recording, forget that thing. All the voices in the sound is not the voices that were captured in the live recording. They captured some in studio. And like, then they master it. So I told my wife, it sounded like I was just being romantic, but I was telling her the truth. Every day I wake up, I'm not preaching me by the way, I'm just giving you a good example. I wake up thinking of how to wow my wife. To make sure she's smiling from molar to premola. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's my target. What am I doing? Mastering. That's why sometimes you just pick your phone, get into your banking app, you send her something. I said, like, Baby, you send me money. Yeah, just because I love you. Hey, what are you doing? You're mastering. That's why I walk in the mall. You see a dress. That will look good on my wife. Then you bring it home and say, baby, can you try this dress? It will look good on huh? you. There's no woman born of woman that is not looking for validation from her man. And their husband sitting here hearing me. Seven years, you have not told your wife she's beautiful. She's even confused whether she's ugly or beautiful. There is no man born of a woman who is not waiting for somebody to honor him. And somebody seated there married to a man. The only thing you have been doing is to run him down. Can't you see what your mates are driving? My sister, you are wicked. Master it. We must master our relationship. That's why there's the act of relationship and there's the act of relationship. The act is that we are married. The act is that I go and pick up the lessons that can keep this woman flabbergasted, overwhelmed with joy. You have sense, scatter her hair. Just, oh, see, see, she's even blushing. Look at, look at, look at, look at. It's part of why I talk about my wife when I'm preaching. It's one of my mastering. Because when you give a woman public validation, you receive reward inside. You are what? Shambhala. They will come and hold your feet. Say, baby, I just, I just, I'm so happy in this marriage. Why won't you be happy? When I'm shouting your name everywhere, posting you, Posting you, jumping over you, rolling in the grass with you. Did you be, some of you that follow see me rolling on the grass with my wife? Hey, she was just enjoying it. Oh my God. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm mastering the relationship. I'm dictating. See, final point on this point. I am responsible to select how she feels. So I choose my action. Why? The Bible says we love him 
because he first loved us. So I don't come here demanding love. I activate love. So when I sit in front of a TV, how do I choose the channels? The channels don't choose themselves. I choose it. So if I want music, I activate music. If I want movie, I activate movie. This like the screen and the decoder and the remote. I select what shows here. Bow down your heads. Bow down your heads. Let's pray. <laughs> yeah, please get on the keyboard. Yeah. First things first tonight, all heads bow. If you don't have Jesus here, yeah, I'm just entertaining you. And everything I've said is of no use to you. First thing you must do is to be with Jesus. If you have Jesus, but you have a broken relationship, your Christian walk is broken, you are still a child of God. That's the truth. But you are a derailed child. You're like the prodigal son who went away. If you're in any of those categories, can you just take up your hand? It's not a shameful thing. So we're not going to try to cajole or just take up your hand. Just take up your hand wherever you are in this room. Let's get that right before we do any other thing. Is there anybody here like that? Jesus, or you have a broken relationship? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, everybody here is the child of God. That's good news. Can we go ahead and just pray a prayer now? Lord, I receive grace to master all things. He said, don't be mastered by anything, but master all things. I just gave you eight points for example. You can go through those points and say, Lord, I mastered this by grace. And grace is often released through teaching. As we're teaching, you are receiving the information necessary to operate in certain graces. Can you pray?